Now, let's work our first example here. So, we've got a company, Misty Mountain Threadworks. They're considering a new major project that will have an initial equipment investment of $1.25 million and an initial investment in networking capital of $1.15 million. That will convert to 25% of sales in every year the project is in operation. Now, they expect to produce and sell 6,000 units yearly as a result of this project and they believe that they will be able to charge $1,000 for each sale. They expect per unit costs of $400 and fixed costs for the project of $450,000 per year. The project is expected to last for four years, at which point they believe they'll be able to sell the equipment for $625,000. If they depreciate the equipment according to a seven year maker's schedule, have a 34% tax rate and require a return of 28% for projects of this risk level, we want to know, should they take the project? So we got two steps. First is we need to calculate the cash flows from assets. And then we need to take the net present value of the cash flows from assets and decide whether we take the project or not. So to calculate the cash flows from assets, we need to calculate operating cash flow minus the change in networking capital, minus net capital spending. Right, remember our formulas. So to get that, we'll start with operating cash flow. We need to solve for operating cash flow, and operating cash flow is EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes. So we need to build ourselves a simple pro forma income statement to estimate EBIT, depreciation, and taxes. So I'll start by writing us a timeline we have a four year project, so we're gonna to need to have four years worth of income statements. Right. Top of the income statement is sales. Right. And sales, we have information saying that we expect to sell 6,000 units at a price of $1,000 per unit. And that is gonna give us sales starting in year one. Year zero is, is, is before the project gets undertaken. So year zero is when we are setting up the project. Year one is the initial year of the project. And we are gonna have sales of $6 million a year. Then we're gonna have costs, sales minus costs. We have two types of costs denoted in the problem. The first type is variable cost. And variable costs are said to be 400 per unit. Which means that 400, right? 400 times 6,000 gives me variable costs of 2.4 million. And then I have fixed cost. And fixed costs don't vary with the units sold. They're just gonna be 450,000 per year. Finally, I have depreciation. Sales minus cost minus depreciation gives me EBIT. And we're gonna depreciate this asset on a seven year maker's schedule. And what we depreciate is our fixed asset purchase. So we depreciate fixed assets and we're told that we bought a fixed asset investment of $1.25 million. So that's what we're going to be depreciating on this schedule. Now we have a seven year makers class, but we only have four years of the life of the project. So what we have to remember is that by definition, we are not going to fully depreciate, meaning we won't depreciate the asset value to zero. There's going to be some value left on the books. 
Now the maker schedule will always be given to you. It's not something you have to memorize. It's not something I would expect you to memorize. It changes occasionally, so this is always something we would just look up on the IRS website. So the maker's seven year maker schedule starts with 0.1429, so 14.29% depreciation in year one. 24.49% depreciation in year two. 17.49% depreciation in year three. And 12.49% depreciation in year four. And what we have to remember is that using maker's depreciation means that we multiply the cost basis of the asset, which is 1.25 million, times the depreciation percentage in every year. So in year one, we multiply 1.25 million times 14.29%, and we see that we should depreciate this asset by $178,625 in the first year. <clears throat> we do that again in the second year, 1.25 million times 0.2449% in year two, and we should depreciate by 306,000 125 in year two. Now we keep doing the same thing. We multiply 1.25 million by the depreciation percentage in the next two years. And we get our depreciation in year three should be 218, 625, and in year four, 156, 125. That's the top of our income statement. Sales minus cost minus depreciation gives me EBIT. So I subtract those to solve for EBIT. Six million minus 2.4 million minus 450,000 minus 178, 625. And I get EBIT of 2,971,375. I do that in every year, 2,000,000. 843875 2,931375 and 2,999875 Now the firm pays taxes EBIT minus interest minus taxes right that's the that's the remainder of the income statement gives me net income but remember that we ignore here, or we don't ignore, we leave out interest expense because that's a financing, not an operating expense. And we are gonna account for interest expense financing costs later in the problem. So we skip right to taxes. And we pay taxes at a rate of 34%. So we calculate our taxes based on our EBIT here. That means I pay taxes in year one of 1 million 10,000 267, then of 966,917. In year three, 996, 668. And in year four, 1,017,918. So that's our taxes. EBIT minus taxes gives me net income. And I solve for net income here, 1,961,107 in year one. 1,876,957 in year two. 1,934,708 in year three. And 1,975,758 in year four. And that's our pro forma income statement. It's a very simple one. We, we've only taken the really big items here, but that's all we need. We're gonna use the income statement to solve for operating cash flow. This is the first step in solving for cash flow from assets. Operating cash flow is equal to EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes. So we do that in every year. Take your EBIT plus depreciation minus negative taxes here. So in year one, this is gonna look like, let me write operating cash flow here. In year zero, we don't have any operating cash flow. The firm isn't operating. In year one, 
EBIT of 2,971,375 plus depreciation of 178,000 625 minus taxes of 1,010,267 gives me operating cash flow in year one of 2,139,732. In year two, 2,183,82. In year three, Two million one fifty three three thirty two, and in year four, two million one thirty two eighty two. So that's the first step. We've solved for operating cash flow. The remaining parts of cash flow from assets is change in networking capital and net capital spending, and we'll solve for that next. Now the next step is to solve for the change in networking capital and to understand how something changed we first have to understand how it was. So first thing we need to do is look at what's called total networking capital. And total networking capital is given with an initial investment of 1.15 million. One million one hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's our year zero initial investment and then it is said to be 25 percent of sales and lucky for us sales are expected to be constant so that's six million per year times 0.25 and that is 1.15 or 1.5 million dollars, 1,500,000. So in the first year we make an initial investment of 1,150. Then in after that, once the project gets going, it jumps up to 1,500,000 and stays that way for the remainder of the life of the project because sales don't change, neither does my networking capital requirement. Now I think one of the easiest ways to think about networking capital, total networking capital here, is to think about it as the need for uh, inventory or parts for the project. So I'm going to make 6,000 units. That means I need 6,000 units worth of parts. And I start with some initial investment here. So I buy a bunch of parts and then I start to build my, my products. Right? I build enough to sell in year one. But once I have used my entire collection of parts, I need to spend money again to buy those parts. And so that's how we can think of networking capital as this revolving account, spending account. I spend, I buy a bunch of parts, then I use all those parts and I sell them all and, I, and when I sell my product. And then because I've used all my parts to sell more product in the following year, I've gotta buy more parts and then I'm going to use those parts to build product, which I'm going to sell and buy more parts. Use those to build product and sell and buy more parts and buy more parts. Right? And then when the, at the end of the project's life, I won't need to continue to buy this money back. And I'm going to get this investment in parts back. So we can think about this as the same $1.5 million that I just keep taking out of my accounts to buy parts. And when I don't need to buy any more parts, this can go back to profit. What I'm interested in is not total, but the change in networking capital. And the change is the difference between this year's networking capital and last year's networking capital. And that starts right in year zero. In year zero, the networking capital is 1,150,000. But before that, there was zero networking capital required because the project didn't exist yet. And so my change is an entire change of 1,150,000 because I went from nothing to something. In year one, I changed from 1,150,000 to 1,500,000. So the difference is 1,500,000 minus 
1,150,000 and that difference is 350,000. Again, the change is I added an additional $350,000 worth of networking capital. After that, the change is zero because I do not have any difference between this networking capital or these two years of networking capital or these two years of networking capital. So my change is zero in the following years. Now, what I have to remember, again, is that because this is a revolving account, this is money that I'm taking out of, of EBIT, for example, and I'm using it to buy more parts for the following year, this is a revolving money that I will eventually get back. And the way to think about it is that I will get the sum of the change in networking capital back. So I will get the sum, and the sum here is 1.15 million plus 350,000, or 1,500,000. Right. Now notice that we change, we're using a little bit different uh, format here, in that I am denoting money that I'm spending as positive values and money that I am returning getting back into the account this is because this is a spending account so money that I'm spending is positive you can think about this as negative spending because this is money coming back to me okay. so that is my change in networking capital account I have a change in year zero and year one and then I have a change in year four and this is pretty common you should expect to see positive spending when we begin the project because of investment and then negative spending when we finish the project because I get all the money for those parts back.